All right, I wanted to start this with a little update just really quickly. This is the dibismuth tetroxide after it's been digesting in this nitric acid for days. Um, not at heat or anything, it's just at quote-unquote room temperature, which out here has been pretty chilly lately. But, I mean, I've left it undisturbed for several days now, and this is what I've got. I mean, this is so spot on with what the textbook describes that I'm calling it a complete success. But, that's not very scientific. I'd love something to react it with. So, I'm calling on all of you, my people. Give me an idea. Something that won't make it explode would be preferable. Um, but... I mean, this is supposed to be even stronger than bismuthate. It's a concentrated nitric acid. Come up with an idea of something to oxidize, with, you know, use it to oxidize. I need something, man. Um, I cannot come up with anything. I've talked to, you know, people on Facebook. Nobody else can come up with any ideas either. So I'm putting it to all of you people. Give me something to put in that fucker and I will film it and hopefully it will be cool as hell. Anyway, moving right along. This is hexachloroplatinic acid. So, this is the stuff that I took and evaporated, you know, again, added 6 molar HCl, evaporated, did that many times, water, add that, evaporate many times, and this is what I've got. Theoretically, this should be right around 2.1 grams of hexachloroplatinic acid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this evaporating dish back on the boiling water bath. I'm going to add 20 mils of water to it, and I'm going to create a solution of this. I'm going to then break up that solution into portions, and we are going to do different reactions with the portions of the solution in order to produce different compounds. Again, my very ambitious plan is for us to produce eight of them, counting this one. Um, because even though I didn't show you how it was made, because you would have died of boredom from the tediousness of it, um, I mean, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. But anyway, this is what you get when you do that, which is, to the best of my knowledge, pure hexachloroplatinic acid. Um, it's pretty hygroscopic. I didn't store it under vacuum last night, I just put it in there just so it wouldn't liquefy itself too much. So, anyway, it's already doing so. <laughs> I want to try to, you know, again, since we're working with such a small amount of material, I, I've, I've, you know, we have to be fairly careful with everything this time because there isn't enough to try a second time. And, I mean, honestly, everything has to be calculated out pretty precisely. Um, I will show the stoichiometric calculations at the bottom of the screen um, so that you can see exactly what, you know, what I did. And, um, yeah, so I will come back when this is dissolved and we are ready to make the first compound. Alright everyone, here is our stock solution of hexachloroplatinic acid. It's very nice, has a nice orange color, it's very pretty. I Actually, I really like that color. Anyway, our first experiment is in homage to my continued obsession with abscesium and rubidium because they're fucking awesome. And we are going to make dicesium hexachloroplatinate. Just because. Um, anyway, what we're gonna, it's going to require is a combination of one milliliter of this solution. Oh, Mr. Yellow Jacket, you so need to piss off. And 1.54 milliliters of this 0 0.3308 molar solution of cesium chloride. Um, I don't really trust anything that I've got that will measure volume on this scale. <laughs> remotely act. I mean, I've got some pipettes that, you know, are the, the good kind, but then I have to clean them, and that's just a royal pain in the ass. So, because I'm lazy, we're just going to do this by mass, and we are going to assume that because these are fairly dilute solutions, they will have about the same density as water. So, we're going to go with that. Alright, so here we go. One milliliter 
of our hexachloroplatinic acid solution. So far, so good. Now, let me tear the scale and 1.54 milliliters of our cesium chloride solution. Oh, perfect. All right, let's give that a little swirl. And let's take a look at that. There we go. Oh, that's very nice. Let's put it over here where we got more contrast with it so you can see the color better. It's almost a, hmm, hello, focused piece of crap. And if you would be level, that would also be nice. Um, nice. That is very nice. Although, I think it looks nicer on camera than it does in real life. In real life, it's kind of a dull, almost school bus yellow. It looks like a, a brighter color on the camera than it does in reality. Interesting. Almost a butter yellow, maybe. Hmm. Well, that's very cool. Nice. There you have it, our first compound. All right, everybody, our next compound is going to be diammonium hexachloroplatinate. Diammonium hexachloroplatinate is very similar to dicesium hexachloroplatinate. However, diammonium hexachloroplatinate is pretty much used. Um, I don't know if it's still used in industry or not, but it's very easily converted from the salt to platinum black or platinum sponge. If you just thermally decompose diammonium hexachloroplatinate, you will end up with platinum sponge. However, if you reduce it with hydrogen gas at 100 C, you will produce platinum black, which is an incredibly fine suspension of platinum, well, basically in solution. Um, it's much, much more reactive than um, some of the other more metallic, uh, the other more larger particle um, solid forms of metallic platinum. So anyway, we're going to make that because that sounds much more cool. So, what I've got here is 5 milliliters of um, our hexachloroplatinic acid solution. And we are going to add a slight excess of ammonium chloride to this. There we go. And let's give it a little shake. Mix it all up. Looks very much like the um, dicesium hexachloroplatinate. Um, one thing that should be evident as we keep going on, salts of hexachloroplatinate are generally yellow, whereas salts of tetrachloroplatinite are red. And God willing, we should see some of those here after we're done with this one. So, uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take and put this one in boiling water bath. Bring it back and show you what I've got here. And I have a flask here that has some zinc dust in it. And I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to that and generate hydrogen. And I'm going to bubble hydrogen through the tube while it is immersed in the boiling water. I'm going to start once it hits 100 degrees Celsius. Um, so, and then we'll let that go for a little while and we should produce platinum black. So, neat, huh? Well, if that's a viable method for reducing um, diammonium hexachloroplatinate, I couldn't tell. It takes a lot longer than I thought it would. So, that's okay, though. We can always see if we can reduce it by other means. Maybe try a little borohydride and see how that does. But anyway, it's okay. There are other uses for 
hydrogen gas, especially with glow-in-the-dark balloons. This should be fun. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to try getting a little bit of this into a small um, beaker, and we're going to test a little borohydride on it and see if that doesn't reduce it a lot faster. So, here we go, y'all. Moment of truth. Can this stuff be reduced with sodium borohydride? Sure looks like it. Yeah, I've found that a lot of easily reducible metals, you can get them back into the metallic state in a hurry with sodium borohydride. I tell you, marvelous chemical. Absolutely love this shit. It's expensive though, but worth every penny. Let's see, there was some solid material left in here, so let's see if it reduces it all, which would be nice because thus far everything that I've been making has been going into platinum recycling and this will be a nice convenient way to convert it all back to platinum. Well, ha ha! Okay, this may or may not work out, but <laughs> I don't even know if it's focusing, but I'm hoping you can see that there is no more of the bright yellow diammonium hexachloroplatinate left. So, yeah, that, that may or may not have worked out good. And if you wanted to see what the inside of my nose looked like, now you know. <laughs> hey, I don't expect you to take my word for anything, man. Okay? Try to offer proof. So, yeah, that looks like a very, very convenient and instantaneous method for reducing platinum down to, you know, I don't know if that, that I mean, it's very small particle sizes, although it appears to clump very easily, so, I don't know, but there you go. We, we did still, wasn't quite the way, now maybe I misunderstood, maybe they meant that this source is so old they still talk about nascent hydrogen which is just funny. Nascent hydrogen is just atomic hydrogen, like you get if you get hydrogen generating on the surface of zinc. So maybe that's what they meant Hydro by hydrogen gas, in which case you'd have to add like zinc and acid to it in order to make that work. Just like I had to add sodium borohydride into this. So um, yeah, it needs to be a, a source of atomic hydrogen. So anywho, um, there you go. So anyway, let's move on to the next compound. So it's the next day, and you can see here that um, all of the platinum and the platinum recycling reduced last night down to metal, powdered metallic platinum. Um, it does, like I said yesterday, it does have a tendency to clump up, but... Um, I don't know that that should be too difficult to deal with. I mean, once it's dried out, I imagine it would probably be very easy to separate the particles. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all I did was I did add um, a couple more pellets of borohydride to this last night, and I left the lid on loosely and um, just kind of let it do its thing overnight. And it reduced everything. Um, the dicesium hexachloroplatinate that I made... All of that is gone. Um, everything's been converted to metallic platinum and I would imagine cesium chloride in there. So, cool. I will um, the can put the filtrate here in cesium recycling and um, we'll use the platinum for another experiment. Um, we'll need to because we're running out of solution here. After that being so successful, I have to report a failure. Kind of. Um... This is the result of, and I know I got a stir plate, finally. Um, I had to save my nickels and dimes out of four weeks of unemployment checks to buy this bad boy. 
<laughs> um, but anyway, um, what I did was I took 10 milliliters of the hexachloroplatinic acid solution and I um, tried to reduce it by bubbling sulfur dioxide through it. I was trying to produce tetrachloroplatinous acid. Um, obviously that didn't work out. It was, from what I read, it should have gone from our normal orangey solution here to a red colored solution. That didn't happen. It turned yellow. And before I had a chance to investigate this eventuality further, I learned why you should absolutely always use a trap whenever you're bubbling gases into something because, yeah, that reaction died down and it cooled off um, unexpectedly when my attention was diverted to something else, and so it all got sucked right back up into the sulfur dioxide generator. So, okay, you know, minor problem. So, um, what happened? It was actually kind of cool. And, and I'm sorry that this, you, you just have to rely on me telling you this because I didn't catch this when it happened on film. Um, but it immediately produced the large crystals of this clear um, precipitate, which I assume was some kind of platinum sulfite compound, perhaps? Bisulfite compound? Um, I was reacting sodium metabisulfite with about 6 molar sulfuric acid in order to generate the sulfur dioxide, so yeah, whatever you would get out of that. Um, I added a little bit of water to it. It was freely soluble in water. And, um, decided to go ahead and hit it with borohydride. Now, I knew that borohydride would not, or at least I highly suspected that that was not going to just reduce it down to metallic platinum like before, and I was right. Um, as was confirmed by smell, um, the sodium borohydride reduced the sulfite that's present, or bisulfite that was present in solution, down to hydrogen sulfide which reacted with the platinum to produce platinum disulfide. That is my best guess as to what this is. Um, it is a very, very fine particulate. Um, I don't know. I mean, it matches up with the description of platinum disulfide. It's not metallic platinum. There is a difference, and I don't know if the camera will actually pick it up or not. But you can tell it's not black. It is... I probably can't really see it. Um, but it's a very dark brownish color. So maybe it's impure. Maybe it's not platinum disulfide. Although, again, I don't really see what else it could be. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you've got any thoughts as to what that is, leave them in the comments, but I'm officially counting this one since the whole point of this video is to see different platinum compounds, and although I wasn't going for anything this dull looking, um, platinum disulfide is definitely a platinum compound I have never seen. So, you know, Making lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> anyway, we still have enough um, solution. I am going to try three more out of what I've got here. And then I'm going to try to use the metallic platinum that I've produced thus far to create another platinum compound. Not sure how that's exactly going to work out, but we're going to give it a try. I mean, hey, if... I was to get eight successful syntheses in a video, it just wouldn't be poor man's chemist video. One of them's gotta fuck up somewhere. <laughs> and this one doesn't count. So, anyway, uh, but rather, it does count, it just doesn't count that way. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and move on to making the next platinum compound. This is the addition of a solution of um, excess of sodium iodide to 2 mils of hexachloroplatinate. Alright. We're supposed to do that in a warm solution. And now we're supposed to take it off the heat and let it crystallize. Oh look! Finally got the dark red platinum compound. 
Like I said, this should produce potassium tetraiodide. So let's leave it here to crystallize. Give it a little bit, come back and see what we get. All right, everybody. Our next compound is going to be dipotassium thiocyanato platinate. This should be a dark red compound. That is an excess of potassium thiocyanate solution. Okay. It turned a color and then it went away. Okay, it looks like that reaction just took a little bit longer. So, this should be dipotassium thiocyanato platinate. Cool. Ah, can't give up too quick. That is so freaking neat. I think what we may have gotten at first was um, dipotassium hexachloroplatinate which then reacted when I started heating this up and letting it stir for a little while to form the red dipotassium thiocyanato platinate. Cool! So, I'll try to get a crystal film of this and see if we can get some good pics of that one. The potassium iodide, or te oh my god, platinum tetraiodide crystals turned out very well, so fingers crossed these do too. All right, everyone, it is time for the next platinum compound, which is going to be platinum triselenide. I've got one mil of our solution here. It looks like it's a little bit more than that. I don't know how that worked out, but okay. Um, what I've got here is a solution of potassium chloride, potassium hydroxide, and potassium selenite. It's just clear solution. Let's see, there's, there's nothing really to see with this. It's the same solution, it ended up being in two beakers because it was just so small once I combined it. And I think that the order that we add things into this is important. So what we need to do is add all of this to our potass or, um, our hexachloroplatinic acid. Then we are going to reduce it using 1.52 mils of a 3.7% formaldehyde solution. So, fingers crossed people, let's hope this works. This one is the... It takes the most stuff going into it out of anything I've done. Okay. Oh, shit. All right. 1.5 mils. This is supposed to be a black compound. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of excess formaldehyde just to make sure I've got enough. Of course, precipitate of dipotassium hexachloroplatinate. <coughs> but this one might be like the other one last night where it's just going to take it a little bit. So I'm going to let this stir on the heat, and hopefully this is going to work. Alright, so when I went back and I checked the article for this compound, it said it had to be an excess of alkali. I, I Somehow I missed that. I added a stoichiometric amount. So, let's see if excess KOH will fix this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ha! There we go. No shit. Okay. Minor details. Still very important. Oh, that's awesome. It worked. 
potassium triselenide every or potassium platinum triselenide my god i don't know it's early people this is like early the next day it's not even six o'clock in the morning <laughs> yes platinum triselenide booyah that is so cool let's take this fucker off the heat let's let everything settle and I will come back here in a little bit, and we will see what we have got. Oh, that's so cool. Well, that didn't take long. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Platinum Triselenide. That is so fucking cool. As you can see, I'm evaporating it down here to get a crystal film, but this stuff crystallized almost the, the moment I poured it out into the watch glass. <laughs> And as you can see, it is precipitating out all over the place here. So, platinum triselenide is pretty damn insoluble, especially when it's cold. So anyway, cool, huh? Alright, everyone. I am having some issues here with reducing all of these platinum compounds back down to platinum sponge. Um, probably contamination from some iodine, from the platinum tetraiodide. So I'm going to have to do some more work on this platinum black slash platinum sponge, um, whatever it technically is, um, before I can do anything else with this. So unfortunately, I've got to call it here. Um, but we did technically make eight platinum compounds. So, I mean, you know, the goal is reached. Wasn't quite as good as I had hoped, but... Honestly, given that I was just going by atomistry articles, which if you look at them, you will see they are not exactly extensive. Um, I I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. And trying to do an experiment, which I what I was going to do was react this um, uh, platinum that's precipitated out with bromine and a little bit of HCl because I'm out of HBr to see if we could produce platinum tetrabromide or maybe um, tetrabromoplatinate or hexabromoplatinate or some mixed species of platinum and bromine but I think that's just going to have to be a clip video so I'm gonna end this one here so anyway, if you've liked this, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down so I know you don't like this kind of shit. Um, if you think I've earned it, please subscribe. Please share the video. And always love the comments, man. Um, always enjoy hearing from y'all with whatever you've got to say. So please stick around for the um, crystal film photos. And until the next video, y'all, I will see you later.